Awesome. Um, all right, we'll talk DOMS and then aging, and then we'll get into uh, proper movements. So what's the understanding of DOMS at the moment? Why do we, you, yeah, the do side. Actually, I love them. Like when I have, I think it's such a good feeling. It's like my emotional support DOMS. Like there always has to be something. Um, but what's, generally speaking, what's our understanding of what DOMS are? Have you ever worked hard two days before? Pardon me? Have you ever worked hard two days before? Yeah, but what do you actually feel? Uh, just <laughs> muscles rebuilding. Yeah, so it's, it's uh, muscle damage. It's uh, inflammation, which is a very normal response to any damage in the body. Um, and essentially that's it, okay? We take our muscle fibers, we break those down a little bit, We've now caused a micro trauma in our body. Our body has to inflame to then build that muscle stronger. And this is like bodybuilding principles from the 90s. This is like their favorite. They love it. Okay. Now, how do we mitigate muscle damage? Uh, that is how we're going to promote rebuilding. So let's go decreasing muscle damage. We can rebuild faster for sure. But once the muscles are broken down, the body has to take its process. Under most circumstances, you're two to four days. Yeah. Also, if you're sore four days after a workout, you're not injured. Well, you could be injured, but you can very much have DOMS four days after your workouts if you just overextend yourself. Okay, yeah, love it. Blood flow. Okay, now this is during workout, something like very basic warm up. Okay, and when we get into warm-up principles um, I think you guys will be surprised in my warm-up philosophies so blood flow very important how else can we decrease muscle damage what training principles lead to high degrees of muscle damage what we we're just speaking about what should our volume be if we wanted to decrease muscle damage yeah low volume but we don't want to come in and do low volume and low intensity because that's called a waste of time so decrease volume and increase intensity. And for myself as a case study, through my whole prep to World's Strongest Man, I'm not sore one day, okay? Because it's all low volume, high intensity, systemic work. Now, interestingly, if we go low volume, high intensity, we don't have to now adhere to, to, to principles of muscular damage and you don't need to wait two to three days to exercise the same muscle again, which is why when you guys do CrossFit, you don't do like a lower body workout followed by an upper body workout followed by a lower body. You know, do your best to consider we did pull-ups yesterday, so maybe we do thrusters tomorrow. But you're also naive to think that you completely avoid the same muscles two days in a row. Yeah? Now, you can go back squat, max back squat, two to three times a week. If you're untrained, you could do it three times a week, and you would progress really well for a long time. The most popular powerlifting program for novices is called 135. And basically, it's very heavy one, very heavy three, very heavy five. You, you train three times a week, lower, you'll do the same for upper. And that's a great way to make progress, okay? Early on, of course. The risk being, we then now have to talk about our systemic nervous fatigue, okay? But uh, back to muscular damage. If we have blood flow, and if we have low volume, high intensity, that's basically gonna avoid all the muscular damage that you need to worry about, okay? Now, I'll add in a third, and it would be avoid deconditioning. Now, this is all relative to what you demand of yourself. Like, by broad definition, I would be very fit, Tim would be very fit, but we could not do anything that each other does without having extreme levels of DOMS. Right? And so then it gets to, well, what are we going to demand of your body? And if you're a CrossFitter, always sticking in the higher rep range is going to be fine for you because we want you to get used to those feelings. We want your, your body to repair. If you're a powerlifter strongman, we're going to want your intensity to be higher more often so that your nervous system gets used to high loads. And then you can grind through better than the CrossFitters can grind through. All right. Uh, now, the blood flow. How do we get blood flow? You're not eligible to answer. <laughs> How do we get blood flow, generally speaking? 
Yeah, like when you're, when you're generally at rest, your core temperature is low, the blood is all from your extremities into your center. We want to protect and warm our center, all of our organs. Anytime your body temperature rises, we send blood out to all of our extremities, which is why if you have sore quads or sore calves, the best thing that you can do is literally just go for a walk and get yourself a bit warm, so then you get that blood flow to the area. Okay? Just to, to, to wrap the thought around blood flow to the area, if we have a damaged muscle, it needs what to repair? Nutrients, yeah, protein. Okay, it needs the protein to repair, get those amino, amino acids to the muscle. Okay, to repair at the muscle, it needs to be in the bloodstream. In order for it to be in the bloodstream, it needs to be absorbed from the small intestine. To be absorbed from the small intestine, we have to eat it and it has to get broken down. So now you can see the whole circle of, okay, now nutrition is gonna lead directly to that muscular recovery. It's going to speed that up, but only if my body is already used to it, yeah, to follow that whole pathway. Okay, make sense? Yeah. What about, um, like, if you're really sore, what about stretching or rolling out a muscle? Uh, the, the, uh, I'm hesitant amongst the CrossFit crowd. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest, the biggest benefit to rolling Look, it is a form of massage, sure. The biggest benefit to rolling from my perspective in relaying the evidence to you would be simply that you're having to like shift and maneuver your body on the ground and that's going to be taxing. That's going to get your body temperature up and it's going to get blood. Okay? Say something like people who say they're foam rolling ITs, the, the IT bands. If you actually take the IT bands out of the body and they, they look at the force needed to, to actually stretch them, you're talking about the force of a... Uh, do you know one of those trucks that rolls out the road? It literally needs to be that to be able to actually have a physiological change to your IT band. Now to talk through foam rolling, what foam rolling actually is, muscles at either end have what's called uh, Golgi tendon organs. Okay? And these Golgi tendon organs, they exist in all of your tendons, hence the name. And when those are pulled on, they have a feedback mechanism to the brain to say shut off, and that's how we don't pull our, our tendons off the bone all the time. If we have an inappropriate connection from our nervous system to our muscle, and it's a bit tight in general, and then we hammer it with a foam roller, the foam roller makes it even tighter, then the Golgi tendon organ goes back up to the brain and says, okay, chill out, then it'll relax a little bit. Important to recognize that when we stretch or when we foam roll, how long do you think that benefit actually lasts? How long do you think? Seconds, maybe. A minute? A minute. I don't know, it feels good at the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually good at the time. Usually it lasts about 30 minutes. So if we're talking about stretching as a method to gain, say, range of motion, we're talking about stretching every half an hour, all day, get up during the night, do your stretching. And this is the stuff that, like, as, as funny as it sounds, this is the stuff that like, ballerinas will do, and people who need to be hyper-flexible will do. But if you don't need to do that, then it's a bit, it's a bit silly. Okay? Um, so yeah, stretching, for me, stretching without load is, and it's not backed by the evidence. Um, when I say stretching with load, I would say something like, uh, okay, you're struggling in the bottom of your squat position to maintain balance. Okay, let's get a barbell on your back at 30% of your 1RM, and let's do five second pauses at the bottom. So okay, we're getting stronger, we're damaging the muscle in a lengthened position, it's gonna be forced to grow back in a lengthened position and you reframe the neural drive, that's gonna cause lasting change to the range of that muscle. Make sense?